The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and white boots. His skin is marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. On his chest, a fading web of tattoos. The cargo belt used to hang him from the tree looks reinforced. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots, they're armor, possibly part of a larger set. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Ceramic plate, zirconium dioxide most likely. This is where the make would be. Under the hill, Fairweather. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. We should keep a lookup for these pieces. The armor could yield information. Maybe he'll know something. No, he must have worn something precious underneath his clothes. They've removed all his clothes to get to it. They did not just trip him for the putrid rags. Someone could have cleaned the yard, but that's a question for the red hat thing. I hear ya, cop, talking shit about the Kuno. Come here and say it to Kuno's face. They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre, the Mazda, the Besmertis and the like. This one still has his underpants. What? Are you trying to ignore me now, fuckface? Kuno, this boots shit is super boring and the guys are total vitupas. It is. It's expensive. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. For a full set, about four years of wages. As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbour Company. But that's just hearsay. Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report on Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. He's not actually sure of that. He's just being tactful. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally, from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint, organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates, until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like the scales of some ancient white monster, cracked and pearly. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form, ageless and synthetic. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. Industrial strength, the can used for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a circus, when the circus leaves town and they tie a black-spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pen. Yes, 
Yes, it looks like they used whatever was on hand, paying no attention to not incriminating themselves. The brief suggested as much, politically motivated by the ongoing strike. Did you not get a briefing? Okay, you should ask me for one the first moment we get. It's not merely polyester, it's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars, alcohol, and heartbreak. A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized, somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. So am I. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Sure. Just don't lose it. The glassy-eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Underneath the curdled meat there is an expression, not carried on his features, but below, inside, an expression of pleasure. This man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. I'm gone. I'm a joke. Look at me. There is nothing funny about jokes either. A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Go ahead, Kobo. Maybe I was getting my rocks off. It's a mishmash, Copper Bolo. You think I'm Messinian, don't you? 
for you, this is how people from Messina speak like. No. My hair is too light a shade of brown. My eyebrows too. Trust your inner racist. You think I am? You think I was a racist because this lump looks like military and has tattoos? That's called profiling. Do I look like an erotic auto-asphyxiation type to you? Captain Coppo Dromo, I fear we are drifting away, fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. What do you mean? It's the power of your... Imagination. Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Because you're a copper rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Coming right up, copper rooney rooney. This is getting upbeat now. Fuck no. You're no Rooney. No, you don't. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. Because you have. Love did me in, Brother Copo. It was love all along. Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? Looking at my face. Motionless. Looking into my eyes. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Ha! <laughs> Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest, and it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos, and extremities blotched pink and blue. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. Yeah! Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his head off! How? It absolutely will not, officer. That's not how physics work. It will maybe cut one thread loose. Yeah, now we're talking! Entertain the Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. The lieutenant is undecided. On one hand, he wants to shoot some gun. On the other, it's an awfully stupid idea. What else can we do? Hmm. Okay? 
It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something, something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you, even enjoys it from time to time. When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a cornered animal. She only hisses. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you whispering about. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. She's not fucked up. Everyone's fucked up. Stop judging shit. Wrong move. But he's whispering still. You haven't lost him. Just don't mess up again. Or you will. There are no guarantees here. It's okay. The pig's trying to pit us against each other. Not gonna let him do that. That's it. You let him off the line. That was a bad, manipulative thing to say. You should understand. I got you this far. I couldn't get you all the way. Try to fuck my Kuno! <laughs> Try to fuck my Kuno away! Me and Kuno are tight. We ride for life. You were too pushy last time. Think this through. Try to really understand the psychological bond Kuno has with Kuno S. Just look. While Kuno has no problem being near you, she always hides behind the fence, afraid for her life. Like she's done something. Something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of also Kuno hasn't all in all. Kuno respects madness. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you f whispering about. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She's smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you. Kuno talks to whoever he wants. Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her so she can't read his lips. Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer. Are you getting this? You think I'm fucking telling you a joke here? How hard do you think it is to kill a fat ass? Sweet talk him, then knife him. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Forget Kuno said that. Kuno was just shitting. Kuno was just running his mouth. Kuno's stupid like that. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. Yeah, she's psycho. 
None of that kiddie psycho. Catburn and shit. She does the real deal. Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. Fuck no, she's not me sister. She's just a stray who got in. Like a mad dog or some shit. Yeah, she was just there. What was that, Kuno? She was in the hallway. Dripping wet. By the fucking shoe rack. In the dark. Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days. In the corner. Every time Kuno went out. I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home and she's sleeping under the desk, under the pile of clothes, like a dog. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit, doesn't even see her there, or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno, Kuno S, two of a kind. Cause she fucking looks like Kuno. No one knows her name, Kuno calls her C. Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. Crazy people. The fucking Nackis. I don't know. Some things are too awful to dwell on. The Nackis and Runkaris might be some kind of defense mechanism. How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. Listen, listen. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later, and fuck you up. You understand? All right. Now we can do business. Yeah? What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with... Oh, don't look him up with shit, Kuno! See? Relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Pig <laughs> cooker. And shit, you can even fuck back in Kuno's kingdom. That fucking pile of eternite. It's a secret door, okay? Just pull it off and you can fuck into Kuno's shack. Shitload pig. Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. You have no idea what the usual is. Just a Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. Kuno's fucking's got one big thing wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. Look at him. Fucking growth hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea. Rugby style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. Yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. You wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustache union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gate. Yeah, cocking boot. You know that jolly union cow fucker? Came around talking about cows or some shit. Came around pretending like he cares about cows. So yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peep of Kuro's armor. Go to the gate. Ask him yourself. Yes, this troubadour has it. You can feel it. Kuno's fuck imp. Kuno uses the fuck imp for target practice. Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. I don't know. Some fucking... Mesk or... or I don't know. Some other place. Night City. 
Kuno is in fucking Night City. Yeah, Kuno didn't smoke him, if that's what you mean. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. You're testing Kuno's patience. Get lost, f Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks too. Are you sure you can take on the most violent man in Revishol? In your condition? Like half? A baggy, but like in this vial. Fuck you talking about half a G? This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. Okay, Kuno's listening. Kuno sees you're too pussy to face Kuno's dad. It's okay. Come back when your balls are big time. Another sane decision, detective. Kuno doesn't fucking care. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and white boots. His skin... Yes, we do. He breathes out heavily. Oh yeah, do this shit! Fuck it up! The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He appears too deep in concentration to even notice what you said. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel separates the scouring stick and gives the cartridge five tucks. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. He's gonna fucking me! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. He feels bad about it, about his eyes mostly, just having bad eyesight, probably from a young age. Whatever you do, do not console him. Fucking idiot, Mook about asshole. Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking. No, we are lucky as it is. We didn't break anything and the victim remains uncompromised. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favors with that. I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. It's bad as it is, us shooting firearms like punks. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. <laughs> I only have one gun! This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Yeah, take it, you fucking banani poika! 
Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth! The cold piece of Bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth! The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your f mouth? At least you won't miss. This isn't mere boundary pushing. There is a true suicidal rage in the kid as she's provoking you. The buckle explodes into tiny pieces, coming loose with a whir. With your hand numb from the recoil, you look at the body slump down. For a moment, the man appears to kneel in front of you, looking straight at you, helpless, trapped within itself. Then the rigor in his muscles gives up and he smashes sideways into the spring mud, letting out a horrid stench. By being a damn good shot, ace is high. The lieutenant takes a little hop to perform the customary salutation. Your palm hurts from the slap. It's precise and down to the point. I knew these guys were f We will perform a field autopsy and determine the cause of death. But before... Excuse me. It looks like I feel like taking a break from the stench. I'm sorry to interrupt the jubilations here. Just a little breather before we do the autopsy. In the meantime, we should try to interview Evrard Claire, the leader of the Union. Harbour property was clearly used in the hanging. The harbour just east of here. Getting in might prove a challenge, though. I would also suggest we interview Joyce, the Wild Pines representative, but we've already done that, so good for us. One down, one to go. Yes, and those were the interviewees. Let's go.